Hey guys, today is Sunday, June 17, 2018. Time for Bible or Opposites. My name is Timothy Andrew Antonio Coven. For the next few minutes, I'll be talking about my father. Quick note, I have 900 some other videos on my YouTube channel, so be sure to check it out. Okay, my father. He's, uh, very old-fashioned, I guess you'd say. Some people would say he's anal, I guess would be a polite word for it, or a tool would be even more polite. Well, my dad did all the old-fashioned punishments. You know, the spankings, which oddly enough hurts the hand more than the ass, but... Maybe wash my mouth out with soap. Ugh. I said one bad word. I have a bar of soap in my mouth for ten freaking minutes. That's really old-fashioned punishment. Or another one. Sit in the corner. Sit in the corner. That's just... You would not believe how long I spent sitting in the corner in my childhood. Just My parents got divorced when I was eight years old, so... That was kind of hard on me, and my dad, well, I didn't get to see him very often. I saw him every other weekend, I stayed at his place Saturday and Sunday. And on Wednesday nights, I would go to his house briefly, have macaroni and cheese, and then go home. And that was after karate, which, you know, honestly, I hated karate, but my parents didn't know I didn't want to say anything. So, then when I was in middle school, well... You know when your parents say, clean up your room or I'm going to throw everything on the floor away? My dad meant it. So, there I am, watching throughout my Nintendo 64, my Game Boy, my comic books, everything. Everything was in this big shopping bag. And, you know, I did the, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And in the words, I never want to see you again. What did my dad say? That can be arranged. Almost two years, I had no contact with him. Absolutely nothing at all. It was horrible. I was in middle school. I was bullied and just... It really was rough. I mean, I had... I had no real male role models thought except for my Uncle Frank. But my dad, when I really needed him, wasn't there. So, when he finally... I, uh... I did contact him on 9-11 because my dad worked in Manhattan and, you know, I just... I was just worried. I mean, even though we weren't talking, he's still my dad. And I worried. I don't want him to die or anything, so... Had to call. He didn't pick up, but I knew he understood. So finally, we got back together right before I was graduating middle school. And my dad said, Well, I'm ready to make, to make amends with you, but there's nothing keeping me in New York. So, he moved to Texas. That was a big bombshell. That was just really, really rough. But, at least we're in contact a little bit. Fast forward a few years, and then, my dad got remarried without telling me anything was happening. He told me, oh, I'm going to Hawaii. And I assumed, oh, it's a vacation. And I guess I go, I'm like, he goes, do you know why I was in Hawaii? I'm like, yeah, you're a family vacation. No, that was my honeymoon. Like, seriously, no warning whatsoever. I had no idea. I had no idea he was dating again. I really didn't. So that was like a slap in the face. <sighs> I mean, just some of the things that he, uh, when my grandfather died, I was very honest and he said, oh, all the money I had is going to go for uh, my son's college education. What did he do with the money? He didn't pay for my education. He bought a house. So, fast forward several years, and now, well, we, uh, I would visit him in January every year, just go to Texas, hang out with him for a week, but my dad, when I go there, my idea of going to be watching movies with him. My dad's idea of being fun is going to museums. He has to look at everything in the museums, every little detail. You know all those signs and plaques and everything? He had to read every single one in detail. I mean... Then a few years back, we got into a major fight in Texas where I, um... 
I was off my meds. I stopped taking my meds for a few days, and I went off the hinges. I said a lot of things which I really didn't mean, and some of them I did mean, but I ended up in a hospital, a mental hospital in Texas. That really was not on, on my vacation, on my birthday. I spent my birthday locked down. So, I got back. My dad, when he left New York without telling me for two years, he said the smartest thing I've ever heard him say. He said, you know, those two years we're talking about both very miserable. I'm not going to make that same mistake again. So now we're on good terms. I, we call each and talk to each other every Saturday and Sunday. So, you know, we're, we're in a good place. So, at least I got that. So, you know, if nothing else, I got, I got my father back on very good terms, and that's what counts. Now, so you wonder if my father is that much of a tool, why do I still keep in touch with him? Well, let's think about it. I'm an adult. I'm in my 30s. Not every 30-year-old has both parents. Some don't have a mom, some don't have a dad, some don't have both. So therefore, I, I appreciate that I've got both my parents. And you know what? That's what counts. Also, I'd like to point out this is my second Father's Day as a father with my wonderful lizard man, Waka. So, that'll be it for now. Be back tomorrow for the most important topic we'll ever discuss here. The topic of my living with bipolar disorder. Hope you all have a good day. Until then, I'm coming. Out.